Dale Earnhardt Jr. is a great storyteller. All you have to do is listen to his popular weekly podcast during the season. On it, you will hear him offer a range of tales, including current events on the most recent races to stories from yesteryear and his own racing career. On occasion, and depending on the guest, he'll relay details from his father's legendary career. One specific thing that makes Jr. such a great storyteller and so enduring to his fans is his honesty. Anytime he shares a story, you know there won't be any sugarcoating. He's as open and honest as they come. And interestingly, that includes being honest about the times in his career when he was less than honest. Let's provide some clarification. Earnhardt's less than honest days aren't referring to anything sinister that he did. In fact, it's just racing. As the old saying goes, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Let's just say through the years, Earnhardt and his crew tried a lot of different things. He's admitted as much on numerous occasions. Like, so for example, I will give you one of, I'll give you one of mine. So I, I put some trick fuel in my car uh, and went to Myrtle Beach and burnt the motor up as soon as I cranked it. <laughs> so I drove four hours to Myrtle Beach and burnt the piston out of the number one piston <laughs> cylinder awesome. and drove home because I didn't mix the fuel. Yeah. I went right to the bottom of the fuel cell. Oh, God, that's awesome. Well, <laughs> it's something that interests the hell out of me. Yeah. You know, we talk in, we talk to, um, uh, Gary Blue, you know, was an innovator. Yeah, Gary Blue on here. He 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 was one of our first guests this year or last year. Last year, yeah, man. Um, we used to race against him. Loved him. Uh, but a lot of people that we've had on the show, Rodney and others. I mean, talking about, um, I'm not straight up calling you a cheater. I'm just saying. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. You, <laughs> you are innovative. <laughs> <laughs> You're innovative. Like you Jeez, man. What? You read Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. No, you're right. I'm part of this too. So like, you know, cuz I told uh <laughs> I would tell people, you know, when somebody gets busted for something or NASCAR finds something they don't like, I'm like, I want that crew chief. Yeah. If he, if my guy ain't trying to get busted, then we ain't trying hard enough. Yeah. You know, I want I loved an aggressive crew chief <laughs> that was willing to to Sit at home for six weeks. Yeah. You know, I did a couple times. Right. So, <laughs> ingenuity, creativity, Earnhardt and the racing community have a variety of ways of describing it. NASCAR has a simpler term cheating. In the past, Junior has only told fans on his podcast what cheating is. He's never showed what it looks like. That changed this past week when the NASCAR Hall of Famer provided a concrete example on Twitter. The incriminating photo revealed a view out the front of his car with a stack of Budweiser decals, and he included a description of what fans were seeing. Want to know what working hard to go fast looks like, he tweeted. It looks like 15 Bud decals stacked one on top of the other in front of the roof cam because it was a counter to less drag in the wind tunnel. The Yuris were hard workers. The tweet received a substantial response, including someone providing a photo of the roof cams, while others in the industry mentioned other ways of getting creative, including multiple layers of paint and using thicker vinyl. There were two particularly interesting responses, including one from Denny Hamlin, who couldn't help but jump into the conversation referencing the tape found in post-race inspection at Pocono that cost him the win. You can reduce two counts today with one piece of tape, apparently, he wrote. Kevin Harvick's crew chief, Rodney Childers, who received a four-race suspension and a $100,000 fine for modification of a vendor-supplied part following the second race at Talladega, chimed in as well. That would be an indefinite suspension for working hard these days, Childers wrote. Earnhardt, bringing up the subject of cheating, or working hard as he likes to describe it, knows that it's a sensitive topic in NASCAR circles. He also knows it's a subject that anyone and everyone has an opinion on. His insights provide an interesting behind-the-scenes look into what really goes on before a race and the links teams will go to find any type of advantage, no matter how small it might seem to the average fan. And for those who think NASCAR introducing the next gen car and dispensing massive penalties to teams like Hamlin and Harvick will discourage this type of thing from happening in the future, think again. It's been a part of the sport since it started and it will be part of it forever. It's a game of cat and mouse between the sanctioning body and the teams, a game within the game. And as Earnhardt suggested, it's very interesting. It's fair to say if fans knew all the shenanigans that go on before the drop of the green flag, they'd often find it just as interesting as the race itself.